Geek Storm, the first one of September. I'm Sean Hilton, and back from uh, the southern border, Michael Allen Harrison. Let's give it up for everybody! Well, not a single crew member clapped for you. None. That's what I get. Not, I mean, quite frankly, I think they all look down. I'm not quite as popular as I think I am. All right, so uh, Joan Rivers is dead. That's too bad. Anything to add to that? <laughs> That's sad. I hope that uh, whoever meets her at whatever Gates uh, meet her are there with fashion critics to mock and ridicule whatever she's wearing. Hey, Indiana, gay marriage, somewhat legal again for until it's not. George Takai can come and visit. Anything? I think he was free to visit anyway. But now he would want to because we're friendly. <sighs> okay. Excellent. Today's first Friday. Why are you shouting? I'm, like, I, I'm seriously right here, and there's a microphone like right there. There's really no need to shout. Maybe if I get louder, you'll come up with some replies to something. You're, you're, so far, you first have, Friday. Have a lot of questions. It's just. What do you think? Oh, it's great. It's the first one, and so and being Friday, mm -hmm. aptly named. Next, next topic. How's uh, how's your skincare going? Uh, pretty good. I was kind of unhappy this week with I had a blemish here, mm -hmm. and then right in this area here. Um, right now, I'm battling what's uh, commonly known as con crud, which is uh, your voice is a little rough. Uh, when you go to conventions and they're like, I was at Dragon Con, seventy thousand people, everybody touching the same handrails, the same escalators, the same doorknobs, and uh, so whatever one person has, everybody, you know, kind of throws it around. So yeah, we. Uh, I would sneeze we, and we, we've I'm already discussed con crud sneezing. in a previous episode. I'm just telling you. Came back from we've Gen also con. talked about Joan Rivers and. Uh, but you're you're redefining con crud. We've already done that. Uh, we've told the world what con crud is. But now is. I have a personal, I have a personal, uh, you know, investment in this. Uh, Phenomenon. Well, please tell us more about concrete. Oh goodness, it's 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 uh, it's awful. And next on your list of things to talk about, I, I noticed that last week when I wasn't here, um, Devin had a huge list, like uh, like legal size pad list of things, and you got to like two of them. So what else was he going to talk about? Do you know? That that would be that that would be what? his personal. Stuff I wouldn't steal that from him. He, oh. he might want to come back <laughs> in the future. So when I have a list and you're doing this constantly, that's one thing. But Devin, his is all of a sudden personal. He's uh, uh, he's not a friend of twenty it's years. HIPAA. So it's a HIPAA violation like, uh, to look at Devin's Devin's pad. Yeah, we we have we have that thing. We, we me thing. and Devin don't have that. thing. No thing will ever be our See, thing. And in in Indiana, right you and me can now officially make it <laughs> our thing. And it's making, okay. We're making no announcements. Me and here. Devin, he's gonna get married. <laughs> so you're happily married to to a lovely lady. And that's and she doesn't need to know. She doesn't watch this. It's all. It's because she doesn't have the internet. I internets. just can't quit you. <laughs> Con cred. Uh, yeah. So that's if you notice my my voice is a little off and uh, I might sneeze a little bit. Uh, that's what it is. See, my wife has put me on a uh, like a vitamin thing for the last three or four years. Right Good. before I go to the con. For a week before, she like force feeds me a ton of crap. Maybe she do that and, all year round. Uh, no, because then it would lose its effectiveness. I don't know if that's true. So it wouldn't work all year round. I mean, you got to like spike and then you come down. Come on. <laughs> that sounds like so, Sean logic. I've heard different types of logic lately, and that sounds like Sean logic. There to you me. go. Makes sense. <clears throat> what else? Is that it? I think that's uh, so. Thanks for checking out Geek <laughs> Storm this week. This thing on. Well, we've got. Oh, April's now going to kick oh, in now, or something. Now she's oh, talk. Well, see now. It's been months. See, you, said a word you know, you make fun of the fact that we have the list, but since we started the episode, I thought you know the producers should have like topic boards or something to like. No, it's all on the fly. Producer is the in the most general sense the word used. Well, they push the they push play on the camera. They take the the video that we shoot uh -huh. and the audio and they put it together and then they start it and stop it. And that's basically it. Unless I say, hey, throw something up here. Uh -huh. that, that's the essence of the production. Um, it's basically him I mean, and this me. guy over here is like checking his track bets right now. Here's the extent that I this got $5 on my little pony in the fifth. Here's, <laughs> here's the extent that this show is produced. 
Five minutes ago, I said to Sean, hey, what do you want to talk about? And he said, I don't know. And I said, okay, that's, that's the production value. And so far, you're seeing where that's going today. <laughs> I'm sorry, April, you had a suggestion. You said something about Please. Star Wars? Yes, the Star Wars movie has had a release date, December 18th, or something like I think we knew that. I think we knew about the Star Wars date. No, I don't want to see Star Wars. <laughs> and that's why she's a producer. Yeah. All right. They did leak Thank some... Thank you, April. Uh, some, I, and I, I don't know if they were real or not, but they, there was some Stormtrooper armor finally that came out. Yes. And I don't know if that was fanboy stuff or if that's legit. Well, myself and, and some of the other uh, people in the in the organization, the 501st uh, Bloodfin, had an extensive conversation about this because um, you've seen it, and uh, we'll put a picture of it right here of the helmet that has been released that is no, supposedly... No, no we're going to do it. It's right. going to be... Well, we're not going to do crap. In this area the producer here. who you just insulted may or may not. Right. It may be a superimposed body of your head now <laughs> on top of some armor, but... Um, and it looks very futuristic. People are complaining it looks too Tron-ish, okay. uh, which uh, is an odd thing to insult it by because since Tron is, you know, Pretty popular, back in the, but also back in the 80s, too, so mm -hmm. it's not like it's futuristic. But it definitely has a J.J. Abrams uh, uh, vibe. vibe to it. But the complaint I was hearing the most from the people I was talking to was, uh, you know, the Empire's dead. Where, they, where do they get money for new... They, they should be all in, like, ramshackle uh, uh, Star, Star Wars stuff instead of new... But this is set 30 years in the future, okay? And... Private investors, man. Since they got rid of... Since Disney got rid of the canon, or since they defined the canon as just the movies and the cartoons and a couple short stories, we don't really know what's happened since... Okay, the Emperor's dead, Vader's dead, but... Government moves on, okay? Like if, uh, if, if Obama were to pass away and maybe a couple top key guys were to pass away, government would still move on. You would still get your, your, um, your lights would be on. Everything would still continue to happen. So we don't know in their eyes in canon what's actually happened in the last 30 years. So new uniforms, new, new armor, the empire is still, is still around, I believe. When I got up this morning, I have to say that I didn't think that at any point in today's conversation Ram I would hear Obama somehow relating to the Empire and the Star Wars universe. That's not even a political statement. That's, that's a, right. the leaders are gone, but the machine not, still, not, still moves not, on. I'm not uh, poo-pooing your politics. I don't care. I'm just saying that you, know, you, you used all that to make your point, which was a valid and good point. It was just Obama to the Emperor and on. I just, you know, that was, that was out there. That's good. Well, Obama is to the United States government what the emperor is to the oh, empire. Oh, crap. Listen, nobody out there right now is getting ready for the SAT. This isn't a prep test, my friend. It's all good. I'm sorry. I'll try to dumb it down for you a little bit next time I make up a... Make up a if an ad at an an is analogy. going at 55 miles per hour from Noblesville, and he picks up some chimichangas... Let's talk about your comical books, then, if that's, if that's what you want to do. Then he heads for Kokomo. At what point will he I don't know what you're saying. bisect Jawa Sandcrawler? What are you saying in April? Not yet. You've been, you've literally been here the entire time, right? <laughs> so uh, you know what we've talked about. This is like the most passive-aggressive geek storm ever. I know you say you it's don't watch us against them. I know you say you don't. And we're watch not the really show. allies either. I know you say you don't watch the show, but you're literally <laughs> here for the taping of the show. So I'm assuming you know what we talked about. Oh, sorry. Uh, yes. Uh, I'm not going to step on your toes. No, go ahead. Dwayne yeah. Johnson, yeah. a.k.a. The Rock from right. the WWE, Finally. has been, and you know what? Please do the voice. I'm not being facetious. Me? Do the finally thing. Oh, I can't. Finally, finally, after like months of him Teasing like and, just yeah. baiting the audience, he yeah. finally comes out and says he's Black Adam. Right. A lot of us thought he was going to be Shazam. Right. We've actually talked a couple times, just Black Adam seems to be such kind of a minor role for such a big star. I would assume then that they are going to really play up his part and he is not going to just be a background kind of bad guy but right. he'll be i would think a major major player in this movie that, that becomes the problem then for this movie is how do you match the charisma of the rock in casting your lead when you've got him as as the villain well i mean he did a movie called doom and so that showed that anybody can really go up against him at certain points but he was certainly the highlight of that show don't you think I don't think there was any highlights of the movie Doom. Okay, if, if the there credits. was, if there was a highlight, anything can have a highlight. It might not be yeah. a great highlight. I'm just saying, gotcha. to, you got you got somebody that's that's so over the top, charismatic, yeah. be your villain. Who are you going to get to be to be Shazam? Who's I supposed have no to clue. Lead, lead I character? really would have gone with The Rock, probably as Shazam. That's that's what I'm. I agree. So, I agree. I mean, plus you got to have two roles. You got to have a little kid role, 
I mean, it depends on how they want to do it. The idea with Shazam is it's Billy Batson, his little kid. He says the word Shazam, which stands for like Solomon and Hercules and Achilles right. and Zeus. And it's not Armamedes, but another A and you know Zeus or Mer something uh, like that. Merlin. Merlin? No. Merlin? no. Oh. Well, no, I think it's Mercury. It's Speed of Mercury. Okay. So they're all gods. Um, so, you know, he says that he becomes a superhero and he becomes a big, buff, bulked out WWE looking With the dude. mind of a child, though, right? With the mind of a child. Billy so the Batson. idea is that, you know, you've got the whole uh, Freaky Friday thing with the superhero theme long before Freaky Friday had been invented. I'm going to throw a name out there. All right. And it's going to get immediately shot down. Okay. Okay. Just because I want to disagree with you on purpose, so we have something to talk about? No, I think oh, it's, okay. there are legitimate reasons why this is a bad name. But I think there's legitimate reasons why it could work to, as well. I think Ryan Reynolds would be would be good in this. Now he did do a bad movie, and I'm not saying he did a bad job in that movie. I'm just saying he that's, did. That's he, a bad script. He did a bad movie. Green Lantern was a bad script. But he can convey that I don't know immaturity or that or the the um, the funniness of a, of a kid in that situation pretty well. And he's you know he's got the the physique for it. And, he he uh, definitely pulls off a younger version of uh, Ace Ventura there. Sure. So, sure. so I, I think he he would be a, wouldn't be a bad choice. I don't know who they're gonna get. Man, gonna be, yeah, I, just, I don't know. He's, I mean, he's got to be a bulked up, buffy looking I know. dude, and I know. he just isn't that big. I don't know who it is. So, all right. So, more important news, though. Let's get down to oh. the actual like oh. Hollywood important oh. geeky type stuff. So, okay. they're remaking Chips. <laughs> California Highway Patrol? <laughs> yeah, yeah okay. exactly. With an eye thrown in for, to sure. make it chips. Sure. Dax Shepard is going to write it, direct I like it, Dax Shepard. and star it. I like Dax Shepard. You know Shepard. what? He is one funky looking dude who able to hook up with Buffy. No, I'm sorry. Hotter than that. Veronica Mars. Kristen Bell, that's right. So he's doing all right for himself. Sure. You know, he went from punking you out to I'm, you know, I'm hanging out making like real movies and stuff. So, what do you think there? The Chips remake, huh? Sure, why not? Didn't see that coming, did you? <laughs> well, that's when probably one of the, few, the few properties that uh, has short been list yet. of. Uh, uh, and they just he just cast the other person. Who is it? He, I, you know what? I, I read the guy's name. I saw a picture. He does look familiar. Yeah. Um, I, he did go with somebody that, that was of uh, either Hispanic, Latino, whatever. I can't remember know. who it was. I don't know. But, I like Dax Shepard. He's funny. So, but the thing is, is Dax is always the funny guy. Right. Even when he tries to play a straight guy, he's almost always this might funny. Be a, it might be a real Dukes of Hazard dish type of remake where they're be. both they both have comedic parts and they're both goofballs and um, very much like uh, uh, Twenty One Jump Street was, you know, where the comedy is in both of them instead of because in the in the old show, you know, if there if there was any comedy, it was mostly around Ponch mm -hmm. uh, and or that fat guy. Yeah, the fat. That's right. Well, because right. fat's funny. <laughs> Lucky for you. Um, so there was a lot of. Uh, um, cross, you know, like Grossman. both, both, both of them were. I think I just pulled out a Chip's third-rate character named Grossman, I but I can't remember the guy who's going to play, you know, a major star in like the next movie. Jim Carrey's name that slipped my mind, <laughs> but Grossman, that was that was in there. Honestly, he had a connection for you as a child. So. He, was, uh, he was like, yes, I, I can be that one day. I can do, yeah, I can do it. that type of thing. I don't know, but uh, yeah, Chip's big news. Yes, before he's even premiered, um, and uh, I believe... You have to restate that because they can't really hear it. All right, so hey, did you hear about Netflix? What about them? Well, they just picked up Gotham. Gotham, now, the TV show that hasn't even premiered yet? That's exactly Holy right. Holy cow. And did you hear what the studio this has already did. done? Is it ABC? I don't know. There are, NBC, ABC is a studio. One of them, they are going to put Gotham on Monday night and butt it up against Sleepy Fox. Hollow. It's on Fox. So... Gotham and Sleepy Hollow one night nice. little geek fest nice. uh, thing there. I like it. So and I believe was it going to be Arrow and I would imagine Flash back to back for a while. Um, now is is did I read that Gotham is the one they're paying two million? No, an episode that is Blacklist. For? Blacklist, that's right. Previously they were paying uh, one point two million dollars per episode to have The Walking Dead on Netflix. And that was the record. Now it's Blacklist. They're paying $2 million an episode to have that on Blacklist. And on, I like that Net show. Netflix. I just don't know that it gives me the bang for my buck that, say, A Walking De Dead does. I mean, Blacklist is on a major studio that should be on, you know, pick it up with your satellite kind of digital antennas. Walking Dead is on a cable channel that I can't get unless, you know, I go out of my way to get it. So... Yeah. I mean, I'm sure the economics make sense to them. It's obviously it was a fun show. I I enjoyed it, but it's also like 22 episodes or something like that. Whereas Walking Dead is 
you know, eight on the first one, I think, and Six then the first boosts and up to like 12. 12. Yeah, I think they're all up to So, you know, it's a, it's a much more expensive proposition. They're obviously, they're going for it. Mm -hmm. So we'll see, but man, you imagine that? Hey, we already made the show. It was a hit. Mm -hmm. We made money. Mm -hmm. We made revenue from whatever. We're about to sell the DVDs and make fat cash. Right. And here's an extra two million an episode. You know who's a big winner there? Uh, David Spade. James Spader. Who we talked about uh, last week when we yeah. did this exact same thing with me and Devin. It was good. Did you watch that show, April? Yeah. No. Okay. She wasn't even here to help it, actually. Uh, speaking of awesome shows that are, are, are I don't know, having a, a bit of a push. Game of Thrones is getting ready to start again. Okay. Who, who cares? But they just released. I wish I could. Nobody cares. Uh, they just re, they just released the fact that two major characters aren't even going to be in the entire season. I don't even know what a Hodar is, and I don't care. He's not even be in the entire season. And some little kid named Bran or right. Brack or something. Bran, you know who Bran is because you you read the first book. Did I? I mean, I did read the first book, but I don't. He's the kid Bran. that got pushed out of the window. He's the kid that can't walk. Oh. He's a Stark. So, is he the one that sings the song? I don't know. I is it Monday? Is it Tuesday? Is it Wednesday, Thursday? So, uh, he was on Space Ghost, Coast to Coast. Martin is writing these books so slowly that they're those oh, two. Oh, Brack! The producer's telling me that's a character named Brack. They're not, two storylines. I'm ignoring your ignorance. Brack doesn't uh, appear uh, on Game of Thrones? No. Huh. Their storyline is already caught up with the books, okay? And it's been three years since the last book came out, apparently, and uh, they're still waiting on him to produce more of these books, so they're, they're just leaving them out completely. Sorry, guys, no paycheck for a year, yeah. but stick around yeah. so that maybe, maybe next time you get paid. Yeah. He needs to, I don't know, he needs to do something. I'm sorry, he'd have to stop counting his money, and why bother at this point? I mean, he really, if he never wrote another thing, think about it, what are you guys gonna do? Speaking of Martin, there was an excellent, at, at Dragon Con, sure. there was an excellent George R.R. Martin cosplay guy, looked just like him, that, so much so that I had to like look at his name badges to see if it was really him or not, because he showed up at this big Game of Thrones photo shoot, and everybody's, oh yeah, but, but I thought, is that really him? And I, because it's a big convention, he could show up at something like that, and, uh, but it wasn't, but it he looked really? just like it. So they, in, in taking all the pictures, they took a picture of him with like a big sword and all the dead characters that he's, that he's killed and everything, so that was, that was pretty cool. I met him. Uh, he was at a convention several years ago before Games of Thrones had come out. Right. I, he was only on book one or two. And mm -hmm. He was the big guest star. He, he's a very approachable fella. He's very, he's kind of round with a hat. So wow. know, he, he's my kind of people. Sure. So, but yeah, I didn't, I don't enjoy that. Hey, you watched the, you, in fact, you did me a, a hookup and got me the last, the first two of the new Doctor Who. Correct. Which is getting a lot more press and a lot more people watching it than, uh, than uh, the Game of Crowns series, so what do you think? I like him. New Doctor? I, I like him. He's, Clara? He's, uh, is he Scottish? Is that what, he was telling Scottish jokes, and yeah. I assume he was, is, but his, his accent is very thick, so it, it will take some getting used to, and I think I probably missed a few jokes by not hearing what he said in, in, in time, but um, uh, so far I like it. The first episode is very uh, fish out of water, um, you know. It was definitely a, like underhand pitch. Yeah. Kind of thing. It was what, 90 minutes? It was a, it was a like longer that. episode. Yeah. And to introduce him, though, they don't just introduce him. They make sure that they go to a very safe place. They they introduce Madame Vestra again, and yeah. her lover, a wife, and, and dra stacks. Mm -hmm. And I mean, they load it up with enough that, you know, we're going to give this guy a lot of cushion. Right. And mm -hmm. uh, unlike the others, where at the end, they kind of do this, this, I don't know, this feeling of, I am one in a line. Mm -hmm. I mean, with Matt Smith, it is literally him walking through images right. of himself and then appearing as the newest. This one didn't really allude to any of that, except for, I thought, was a cheap stunt at the very end, which you had told me about. And after I saw it, I'm like, eh, where they have a Matt Smith throwback, flashback right. kind of thing, right. where song. he's like, hey, you know, be nice to the new guy. Right. And I'm just like, that, it just felt cheap and not, I don't know, I'm, I'm not in love with this doctor. I wasn't in love with Matt Smith for quite some time. It took him a little while, at least when he did the big thing where, you know, I'm gonna protect the earth and did the whole walk through the faces and showed himself. I thought that was a dramatic element. Mm -hmm. This felt like d very much the, as I said, just kind of a softball entrance for a doctor and didn't have much impact. He didn't leave you 
like when Tenet's like, which one am I? And he's, you know, bashing it over your head that right. we have to figure out what kind of doctor I am. And then right. Smith has his big heroic moment. This guy really, they didn't, I don't know. He was kind of, he was, he was out, uh, out of his mind a little bit and um, you really didn't get any kind of feeling about who he was going to be in that first episode at all. Yeah. Because he was um, basically it'd be like dropping you in, in, uh, in Zimbabwe. And they have, I have no idea where I'm at. I have no idea who I am and I can't speak the language and it was very much fish out of water. And uh, so kind of an odd first episode. They, and they've done that with Regenerations right. quite often, but usually it ends with kind of an impact statement, right. like boom. And this one, even the second one, um, which is they immediately throw in Daleks. It's like, we're going to give you a soft entrance right. and now boom, we're immediately right. going to Daleks. Right. I'm just like the entire time. I'm like, uh, Moffat. I'm like, it might be time for you to think about where all these Daleks this... come from. Cause that wasn't when, when Eccleston came along, <laughs> he killed them all. There, yeah. Wasn't there, he was like, like, yeah. Okay. So now they're, they're all over the place. They're again. everywhere. I mean, they're popular. I love them. Everybody loves Daleks, but Man, his second episode yeah. just felt, again, like, all right, we're going to go to the old hits and the classics. And so far, this has not had impact, depth, or feeling that has blown me away. Now, some of that has to deal with the fact that I haven't got to know him as well. Right. And they're even playing that up with his companion. They're actually playing it up really hard with his companion this time where I don't know you. I don't right. know about you. Right. And so you're getting this weird thing with the companion, you're getting this weird intro with him, you're getting, I think, some softball kind of writing and, and other things of that nature. Not my favorite take on it so far. I think Peter Capaldi's got some really good look to him. I think he's got potential to be an amazing doctor. I think we just need to work out some of these kinks yeah. and get going with it a lot quicker than what we're already doing. It's because gonna patience, see, see how, he, how he's going to be. Um, the stories are all gonna be the same. You still have all the same showrunners and, and Script writers and everything. So well, there's already talk about a new showrunner. Really? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it. I mean, given Moffat, whether I think he might be a little long in the tooth or not, you know, BBC. You know, these guys come and go pretty quickly. Right. The same thing with the showrunners a lot of the time. So he's had his run. He's had and he's had his own doctor. He's got to do his own companion, his own set. Right. He's got to do his story, and he's had a major impact on the Hugh universe. And it's like, all right, it might be time to let some new blood step up and go somewhere with it. And we'll see how that goes, because now we're going to get a showrunner stuck with a doctor that wasn't their pick. Right. And so that, that's a little interesting, I think. So, But there will be plenty of Doctor Who merchandise and items and things to talk about at the Kokomo Con, oh, October 18th, right here in the city of Kokomo, held at the Ivy Tech Conference and Convention Center. On US 31. 50, from 40, 40,000? 40,000? 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, 40, square feet 40, expected uh, square feet. over 100 vendors. That's a lot. So That's a lot. it's a lot more than we've had actually in the past. We, we, As you know, I've been working on the website and adding a lot of names. Mm -hmm. And I was surprised myself when I'm like, there's a lot of names. When mm -hmm. I saw the final list of stuff that hadn't been added yet, mm -hmm. I'm like, it. I had to start scrolling. This is a very wow. affordable show. It's, it's only $10, $10 to take it. And that's a lot less than a lot of other shows. Uh, a pretty impressive costume contest compared to some others I've been to with a $501 cash prize in honor of the 501st who mm -hmm. have supported us from the very beginning, which I think is one of the best cosplay groups um, out there. One of the most organized and very helpful to, to us. And not that all cosplay is not great, but these guys really, they know what they're doing. They're showing up on time. They're helping out. They're, at, they're looking over for me, going, hey, what can we do to help out now yeah. to make this show better for you? You know, they want to do a droid hunt or they want to do a charity thing. Just, it's a really good organization. So, yeah, you know, we're going to, their name is 501, so we're going we're gonna to give away $501. And touching. I had a couple people go, hey, why are you doing that? So that's why. That's good. It's touching. Yeah, good people. And then uh, your, your shirts are on sale right now. Over at uh, Comics Cube, which acts as your ticket to the show. Shirt and ticket for 10, 20, 20 bucks. 20 bucks. So, not a bad deal. All right. You going to be there this year? Oh, yeah. Are we going to dress as? Uh, I don't know, because uh, I, yeah, I'll... Try to get a new one? We'll be there at the 501st booth, but uh, so I'll probably be in my armor, but... Uh, and you do a really nice clone armor. I do. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. So. Uh, there were, uh, at the, again, I hate to keep going back to that, but DragonCon had uh, a... Uh, it's okay. It's a big influence in your life. It is. You love Dragon it. Con is my, Dragon Con's my vacation. It's my, my Gen Con. Yeah, it's, exactly. I, I go on and on about Gen Con, so... It's, uh, it's, it was... It's what I look forward to all year. It's what uh, I'm going to stress about until October when I see if I can get my room or not. And uh, that's a big deal. 
it's a very different type of convention. It's, it's not convention center related. It's the hotel related. There's really just three or four places where everybody congregates. And um, there were panels. I didn't see a single one. My first year, I saw nothing but panels and didn't really get to see a lot. Last year, I kind of went back to the middle. This year, I went all photo shoots and no panels. So I really next year, I need to find a, a happy medium and, and get some stuff done and see some things. But I saw some great stuff um, and uh, some amazing costumes. But where I was going was the, uh, they have the parade every year, every Saturday, and they shut down downtown uh, Atlanta, and it's, uh, if you were to sit in one place, it takes an hour, an hour and a half for the parade to go by you. Wow. So it's, it's big. And um, the Star Wars group was always the last group to come through uh, up until this year. Vader was always the last thing coming through. And this year, they put Vader in the middle of the Star Wars group and had some kind of Santa Claus thing at the very end, which I thought was kind of goofy, and I hope they go back to uh, Vader. But... Um, of, Santa Claus thing. Yeah, it was like a Santa in a... Really? Yeah. Really professional? And then... Yeah, when was the last time we went on the KGov, like, hookup Let's channel? Let's do that. Let's and do just that. When, when it, you're like, reading news and talking hey, about something... Hey, today important. at the Learner Building, I'm we're going gonna, gonna, like, hey. to come in and go, and this is where they filmed the first episode of Star Trek, and just make up stuff. I'm sure it's very important. What would you like to say? Well, it concerns the city of Kokomo. Did you know we recently announced that we will have a prospect lead team? Can you hear me? Yeah, that seems yeah. more like a news thing you should well, do on no, your show. No, it's yeah. cool. Speaking no. of skincare, look at her. Look at her. Look at her skin. It's like flawless, it's porcelain, yeah, porcelain like. Do geeks uh, actually watch sports ball? Sports ball. Nobody cares yeah. about sports nobody ball. Nobody watch sports but ball. But they care about money. How? How does that put money in well, a geek's pocket? Well, I, I can't hit a sports ball. If you visit KokomoBaseball.com, you uh. have your chance to name our new team and win <clears> up to, or win two thousand five hundred dollars yeah. plus season tickets. I got news for you. The owner's going to name the team. Okay. We will have no Somebody's in any way. Win money. Right. Well, somebody will People win some money. money. That's, I'm trying to help you guys out. Really? Are we going to get some of that money? No. Some advertising revenue coming no. our way. They're going to no, finally no. pay for a ticket so no. you can see a movie and I don't have to pay for it. You know you don't get a per diem just because you're on the side of the camera. You know that, right? She doesn't get a free sandwich? No, there doesn't. I've never got a free sandwich. You get a free Coke every single week. That's nothing to do with being on the show. I missed Geek's Room. Oh. Well, maybe well, what, if you watch, watch some it geek once stuff. Once and you can watch you know, it anytime see, you want. I watch it live, and that is so much better than watching it on my phone. Wow. And I do watch it sometimes. Sometimes yeah. I watch the same episode over do you? and over. Is it always one of me on it? Yeah. I knew it. <laughs> anyway. I think we're out of time. I think she just ate up the last of our time. We've got a few minutes left. So you uh, can name a baseball team. Yeah, great. Sports ball. Sports ball. Fantastic. Sports ball, but uh, you know I'm a, you know who I like in sports, the Cincinnati's. I hear they're great. <laughs> <laughs> that thing they do with the round spherical object. Oh, it's awesome. It's good stuff. They, hey, they throw it <laughs> <laughs> so hard. Somebody's in there, out of there. Yeah, football's getting ready to start. Yeah. There'll be like that cool mechanical robot oh, yeah. football dude. That's kind of geeky. Talking about their fantasy leagues and whatnot. Yeah, I love that. You D and D players. Yeah. yeah. Hey, who do you got? I got to I, Guys, I got to I got to stop. I got to go get my third player out of the fourth round of my fantasy. Right. Blah blah blah. Right. Where's my D and D channel? Where I want to see on ESPN like the rankings of my D and D characters. Yeah. Like, That'd all right. Cool. So it seems like uh, Paladin uh, five eight seven there is taking the lead in the D and D fantasy league. Not gonna happen. No. All right. Sports. Thanks for. Grinding the show to a halt. Right? So September 27th, right here at Pepper Whistle, where we film Geek Storm almost every single week. Yeah. September 27th from 11 a.m. till 6 p.m. is all day Geek Game Day. Now you've had game nights before, right? Several, uh, but, once but a this, month. This is a game day. Yeah, all seven dun, straight dun, 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 hours. Game day. Yes. Wow. So you can get your uh, fantasy game day sport thing going. Will they be playing fantasy football here? No, not unless no. Not at all. Some people may take a break to go check their fantasy football thing. How about? I don't. How about? We could hook up like a PS4 or something to the TV thing, and they could play like Madden. What's that football like fantasy game? The something bowl. Blood Bowl. Blood bowl. Yeah, well, how about Blood Bowl? We'd we be playing probably, a Blood Bowl. We could find somebody to play some Blood, Blood Bowl. bowl. That's we very can get popular. some crossover traffic there. With there was something called Stratomatic back in the day. Stratomatic. That used to be like the same kind of thing, mm -hmm. where you would like do all the stats and stuff like mm -hmm. fantasy leagues, mm -hmm. but. Is it still around? So I think it's it's very similar. 
Wow. Well, I think that's about all the time we have for these. Oh no, we still have a couple more minutes. Are you sure? We could really stretch this. We no, because you got to think that there's the ending credits and the closing credits. Oh, so that's done. right. It's really only like twenty. You know what? Because I was li I was thinking about all the actual time we spent talking about geek stuff and not this area right here. Yeah, it was, that got. Yeah. That got. With that got its own press release. Yeah. She talked about it on her own thing. Yeah. You know it's how on a, Facebook page. On railroad tracks, somebody flips the switch and yeah. you go off this way for like, a while. Oh, holy cow! That's we were non-geeky. Drop the beat. Oh. Well, we didn't have time because yes, this one right here. I had a whole list right up here. Right, sports ball. So next week we'll talk about Liam Neeson not coming back to be Ra's al Ghul, even yeah. though he said, "Hey, I'd like to be Ra's al Ghul." He'd like a check, though. So, you know, they're not going to pay that kind of money. Yeah. All right. I'm Sean Hilton. This is Michael Harrison. Who's that this back there that came up here? Who's who's that? that Show ruiner. Uh, <laughs> check her out on KGovs. Learn about this stuff and topic. All right. All right. And check us out next week when we're actually going to talk about something. All right.